There are numerous workout programs which involve lifting a different number of days per week. Some programs require you to lift three times per week and others require six or more sessions per week. So how many times per week should you lift to maximize muscle growth? In this video, we will try to answer this question. Well, the number of times per week that you should lift in the gym is not really a variable to prescribe in itself. Rather, this is more of a byproduct of multiple different factors which we will cover individually. The first and probably most influential factor is our total weekly training volume. The best way to quantify volume in the context of hypertrophy training is via the total number of hard sets a muscle is trained with per week. This is because muscle growth can be equally achieved using a large spectrum of different rep ranges and loads, assuming we are training close to failure. So, provided that intensity is sufficient, each set is likely to induce a similar hypertrophic stimulus when training anywhere within the approximate 5 to 20 rep range. In general, volume tends to follow this hypothetical relationship with muscle growth. The more volume we train a muscle with per week, the faster rate of growth we experience. However, this is not a linear relationship. Rather, we see diminishing returns with higher and higher training volume. In other words, we experience less additional muscle growth with each additional set that is performed. On average, the research tends to find that training each muscle with somewhere around 10 to 20 sets per week will achieve good results. Once we start going above 20 sets per week, there doesn't seem to be all that much additional benefit for hypertrophy. However, this is also likely to be subject to significant individual variation. It is very possible that highly responsive trainees may not see much additional gains after only around 10 sets per week, while less responsive trainees may see additional benefits going up to 30 sets per week. Total weekly volume will likely be the main determinant of how much time and energy you will dedicate to lifting each week. With all else equal, the more volume you perform, the more time and effort you need to put towards training. And the less volume you perform, the less time and effort that is required. The next variable which will influence how many times per week to train is frequency. This refers to how many sessions per week each muscle group is trained. It should also be noted that when discussing different frequencies, we are assuming that total weekly volume is equated. So, let's say we want to train a muscle with 12 total sets per week. If we train this muscle only once per week, it means we would need to perform all 12 sets in a single workout. If we trained this muscle two times per week, we could perform six sets per workout. And if we were to train this muscle three times per week, we may perform four sets per workout. When total weekly volume is equated, frequency doesn't seem to have a major influence on muscle growth. Although higher frequencies tend to be slightly superior, especially when training with higher weekly volumes. As a general rule, if you were training a muscle group with less than 10 sets in a single workout, then you probably aren't going to see much of a hypertrophic benefit from splitting this volume across more training sessions per week. However, if you were training a muscle with 10 or more sets in a single workout, then you are probably going to see slightly superior growth by splitting this volume across two or more sessions per week and training the muscle with less volume in each workout. In terms of how this influences the number of times per week we lift, frequency can essentially be thought of as a vehicle for volume. If we want to train with higher volumes, we could just add more sets to our current workout, but this will make our sessions take much longer and results in training in a more fatigued state. But if we increase our training frequency, we have more opportunity to accumulate volume and train each muscle in a less fatigued state. The next factor influencing how many times per week we train are our muscle recovery times. This is not a well-established idea, but we probably want to allow each muscle enough time to recover after training it before we train that same muscle again. However, exactly how long we should allow between training a muscle group is not entirely clear, and it probably is dependent on other variables like volume, intensity, and frequency. In general, if a muscle is trained harder within a session, meaning with higher volume and or intensity, then recovery times will usually be a little longer. But if a muscle is trained with less volume and or intensity, then it can probably be trained again sooner. In most typical hypertrophy training routines, a good general rule is to allow at least 48 hours recovery between training a muscle again directly. This may influence the number of sessions we perform per week, as we may need to adjust our lifting routine to accommodate sufficient muscle recovery. And the last primary variable influencing the number of times per week we lift is systemic fatigue. 
This refers to the total amount of training stress accumulated throughout the week. This includes all forms of exercise, including resistance training, cardio, sport, and recreational activity. Essentially, there is only a finite amount of training stress that we can handle each week. If we exceed our systemic capacity, we experience what is known as overreaching. This tends to result in symptoms such as a decreased motivation to train, a decrease in lifting performance, increased tiredness throughout the day, decrements in cognitive function, and possibly some negative health consequences such as altered hormonal states and an increased risk of illness. While overreaching is more common in endurance athletes, it is still possible to reach this state via resistance training. This is especially true if your exercise routine includes other forms of exercise, such as endurance training or competitive sport practice. This may influence the number of workouts we perform per week, as we want to stay within our systemic limits. Since more sessions per week generally means that more total volume will be performed, trainees should ensure they aren't performing so many workouts per week that it exceeds their systemic limits. So, based on all these factors we have discussed, trainees can determine some kind of training split. The training split is just a general overview which describes what muscles are trained on what days. There is no universally best training split that everyone should follow, rather it comes down to the previously mentioned variables. Generally, training splits which involve more sessions per week are better able to accommodate higher volume training. However, it may not be ideal if we train a muscle too frequently, as we may not be maximizing hypertrophy adaptations if we don't allow sufficient recovery time. On the other hand, training splits which involve fewer sessions per week may be more suitable for those training with lower overall volumes. These splits also usually provide plenty of recovery time between training the same muscle again. Here are a few common training splits that can be effective for muscle growth based on the variables we discussed. Push-pull leg split performed 6 days per week, push-pull legs upper lower performed 5 days per week, upper lower performed 4 times per week, or full body training 3 times per week. And there are many more splits that can be successful for lifters. The training split that you implement should reflect your own personal preferences. A unique consideration that relates to this topic is the idea of 2 times daily training. This refers to splitting your workout into two sessions per day, separated by multiple hours. So part of the workout is performed in one session, and the other part is performed in the following session. The idea here is that if you split your training into two sessions, you can perform each workout with more focus and intent, compared with a single session. This is essentially just an extension of training frequency, allowing us to hit each muscle in a less fatigued state, which will also likely have a slightly beneficial effect on lifting performance. However, does this actually have beneficial effects on muscle growth? Well, we have one study investigating this concept. In this study, trainees performed the same training routine with all sets taken to failure in the 8 to 10 rep range. One group performed all sets in a single session, while the other group performed half their volume in the morning and half in the afternoon. After 8 weeks, both groups saw similar muscle growth with no clear trend in favour of either training routine. However, this protocol isn't typically how lifters would implement twice daily training in practice. Most lifters would probably opt to train different muscles within each session, so they can train each muscle in a more fresh state. So I think this study would have been a little bit more practically relevant if it was split something like this instead. As we can see here, the chest is trained alone in the morning sessions on Monday and Thursday, and the quads and triceps are trained in the evening. Similarly, the back is trained alone in the morning on Tuesday and Friday, with the biceps and hamstrings trained in the evening. Although, even with this setup, I don't think there would be major differences between groups, if total weekly volume is equated. There might be a slight advantage to splitting a workout into two sessions, but it is probably not worth the extra effort in most cases. Furthermore, there would probably be more of an advantage for those training with very high volumes, and much less of an advantage for those training with lower volumes. And the last and probably most important consideration regarding the number of times we lift per week is our practical constraints. This refers to the time and effort you are willing to dedicate to lifting per week. This will be highly individual for each lifter, based on numerous factors such as work commitments, family commitments, social life, accessibility to the gym, other sport, exercise or hobbies, your specific training goals, and simply how much you enjoy lifting. 
For these reasons, there is no universally best answer as to how many times you should train per week. Someone who has fewer responsibilities and wants to maximize muscle growth may train with more sessions per week. Whereas someone who has more responsibilities, performs other forms of exercise regularly, and may just want to build a little more muscle on their frame, may opt to train fewer sessions per week. Just ensure you are training in a realistic and sustainable number of sessions per week to ensure long-term adherence to training. To summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. First, it should be understood that the number of times we lift per week is a byproduct of other variables. It is not really an independent variable which impacts muscle growth directly. Workout frequency will be influenced by how much volume each muscle is trained with, how frequently we want to train each muscle, muscle recovery times, and systemic fatigue limits. Based on these variables, trainees can come up with a training split that suits their preferences and goals. As a very general guideline, training somewhere around 3 to 6 sessions per week is probably a good range for most intermediate lifters. Fewer than 3 sessions per week will make it difficult to accumulate enough volume to make significant gains over time. And performing more than 6 sessions per week may have small additional benefits for muscle growth, but more volume and higher frequency than this probably isn't going to be all that much more productive. Furthermore, pushing our training loads too high could potentially result in joint or connective tissue irritation or excessive systemic fatigue. And most importantly, trainees should implement a routine that is realistic and sustainable for their individual lifestyle. This will ensure consistent adherence to the program, which is necessary for long-term success. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.